1900s, Wyoming Representative Frank Mondell passed an appropriation through Congress to put a monument up for the Fetterman fight on the location known as Massacre Hill, where Fetterman's body was found. The monument, it does say that there were no survivors, but that is not really the case when you think about the fact that there were Lakota warriors who overwhelmingly won that battle and survived the fight. In 1905, that monument was finished being built, and by 1908, they brought out Colonel Carrington and soldiers who were stationed at Fort Phil Kearney for a large unveiling ceremony. Interestingly, they also invited out Chief Red Cloud, but unfortunately Chief Red Cloud was too elderly and couldn't make the trip. After the unveiling ceremonies, some of the soldiers who were stationed at Fort Phil Kearney were visiting, and in particular, a soldier named Samuel Gibson was talking about his experiences surviving the wagon box fight. Samuel Gibson rode out with a local man by the last name of Bezold to show him exactly where that fight took place. And unfortunately, Gibson, he was fell from the horse or he was kicked by the horse and somehow injured his leg. So he couldn't make it all the way out to the location, but he pointed at a distance and said, Gibson, well, it's right about there to Bezold. Gibson went back home to Nebraska, and for several years there were different efforts to try and mark the wagon box fight. Representative Mondell tried and failed to pass appropriations through Congress, and eventually different historians take up that work. One of those historians is William Camp out of Chicago, and another historian is Grace Raymond Hebert, who is serving as the secretary to Wyoming's Oregon Trail Memorial Commission. In 1915, the two of them were corresponding with several survivors from that fight. Samuel Gibson was one of the key correspondents, as was Max Lippmann, another survivor of the battle. In 1916, William Camp came out and using those correspondence that he had, he, erect, he pounded a pipe marker into the ground to locate where he thought the wagon box fight probably happened. And then later that summer, he brought Max Lippmann out to the site as well, as well as several other survivors in later years. And they all said, yes, this is the location where it happened. Grace Raymond Hebert, she went to investigate and she saw that that pipe marker, it was in a different location than where Bezold was pointing out. She talks about crawling on the ground on her belly, looking for artifacts and being quite ridiculous. She was happy that she was the only one with a Kodak able to take pictures of the site. And she said that she found nothing around that pipe marker, but in the location that Gibson had pointed out to Bezold, she found shells, she found pieces of wagon, she found pieces of a, of a water bucket. She found a lot of evidence that that is where the battle took place. Unfortunately for Hebert, she had an uphill battle to fight herself in order to erect a monument in that location. Camp had jumped her claim. He had already pounded that pipe marker into the location and brought several different survivors to confirm that that was the spot. And so there were a lot of locals who believed him and said, yes, that is the, where the wagon box fight happened. Grace Raymond Heber, she was unable to get a monument for the state of Wyoming put up for the wagon box fight until 1920, after she had Samuel Gibson come out in 1919, and he came out to confirm, yes, that spot he pointed out to Bezold, where all of those artifacts were found, that is the location of the wagon box fight, and that's where you can see the red granite monument that Grace Hebert erected in 1920 today.